whole opening on account of you. All right. Well, Henry, what would you do if a lovely girl fell into your arms from out of nowhere? I? I'd look for marks of identification and ship her back to her nearest relatives. Yes, of course you would. Yes, I would. <laughs> One woman's fur coat, $60. An electric razor, 40 cents. A percentage of $1.98. I didn't know you needed money. Why didn't you ask me? Well, I didn't realize it. Stop this fooling. You've got my ticket. I think that chap was trying to rip me. Oh, no, Henry. Yes, yes. I had an experience once before with one of those boys in New York. Yes. Oh, yes. really? Only he was very clever. Yeah. At the oh. end of the performance, he made an American flag come right out of my hat. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> in New York, yes. <laughs>
How'd it go, Egghead? Oh, I hate these Mardi Gras. You can't tell the actors from the customers. I just have a bit of a headache. I'm going to get something for it. Want me to come along? No, thanks. It's just one of those sudden attacks. Oh, one of those. And maybe I'd better go along. Oh, Henry. You know perfectly well you can't get aspirin in a flower shop. No. Those roses. Well, they're just in fresh. We call them climbing Herbert Hoover. And you can't send roses. They mean... I'll take the last. Oh, yes, sir. There are four dozen. I object. Objection overruled. Four dozen climbing Herbert Hoover. That is practically inviting a breach of promise suit. I wonder if I'll ever see him again. What are you talking about? What did it happen just like that? How can you want it off of the show? Well, you'd better. Now, look, Henry. You've done your duty by Aunt Barbara. Now, you run along and play. 
Four dozen climbing further Hoover. Would you deliver this to me? Miss Sunny? Yeah. How did you know? Well, if it weren't for Miss Sunny, we'd be selling peanuts around here. <laughs> oh. My friend Hector here does the most remarkable trick. Extraordinaire. It's Frank. He thinks he dunks busy whistles, he juggles, and draws the new map of Europe with his tail all at the same time. Which for tonight only we will get. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 Hector. I insist. I insist. I insist. Come right back up here. How's the headache, dear? I'll be all right as soon as the acid begins to work. Well, what was it to be? Supper in her private tent with an elephant pouring champagne? Might be exciting at that. Yes, the jaded palace. his idea of a nice apology. He has nothing to apologize about. I asked him to kiss me. You did what? I asked him to kiss me. Climbing Herbert Hoover. Muggins, I'm going up to your best dress out in that howling mob. Oh, you should see him get me through that howling mob. Warren. Uh, this is my sister, Miss Warren. Miss Warren, meet Mr. Bates. Any friend of Mr. Warren is a friend, friend of the Ross. Uh, Larry, we'll be back in a moment. Yeah. Uh, je vais vous chercher une table. La plus fun. La plus bonne de ma tante est très bon. I know that one. <laughs> now, Larry, I'd be very nice to this little Juliet girl. Well, of course, why not? After all, the runny meads, you know, they don't grow trees. And your Aunt Barbara. Look, Henry, for 364 days out of the year, you can be Aunt Barbara's watchdog trying to run my life. But tonight, why don't you relax and have a little fun? Be a Swiss guide and go yodeling through the gas. Yodeling? <laughs> Thanks for yodeling at my time of life. Yeah, be la la
You will all start off with our famous deluxe oysters, of course. Oh, not for me, thank you. I don't care for oysters. Oh, you haven't tasted a deluxe oyster. No, and I don't think I shall. I think I'd rather have some, uh, some uh, turtle soup. You won't like it. My dear sir, please, don't argue with me. I am a lawyer. I'm a chef, and I can recommend you the oysters. But I hate oysters. But they don't taste like oysters. Well, I don't want oysters that don't taste like oysters. I want turtle soup that does not taste like turtle. Larry, 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 uh, Larry, Larry, listen, I've lost him. Please, Doman, please. Hello, hello. Are you sure, Freddie? I've been here since 4 o'clock, and nobody's been around. Hello? I'd like to speak to Miss Sally Sullivan. Morgan, somebody wants to talk to her now. She don't want to talk to anyone. She's got a date. She's gone. She's gone. All right. Thank you. I'll put your oysters on the fire. Turtle, soup. Still no sign of him. Sure, Muggins. You know what they're like out there. I'm only telling you what Freddie told me. He's been on duty since 4 o'clock, and he never slips up. Oh, we'll have those sent over to the house. It's a gracious to pleasure. You were right, Morgan, as usual. Down with three. Pick up two. Next hand, we'll play without cheating. Pick up three. Honey, remember that rain check? That I do. Well, it's raining. Good up. Mm -hmm. Best time, and I don't like it. How about some coffee and donuts? Coffee and donuts? Egghead, bring along that breakaway suit of yours. We're going places with Sonny Sullivan. <laughs> Oysters to wash, of course. Of course. I'm awfully sorry that I had to be so firm with that oyster peddler, but I was determined to get what I wanted here. Turtle soup, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't believe you like the rush. I do like it. I do. It is place. But I think it's the place of every good restaurant to realize that the customer is always right. Even when he's wrong, he's right. Ah! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> What do you want? A little bit of everything. I'll give us a drink. What's the matter? Have you seen a ghost? but I have a very good reason. Yes, I saw her. Yes, you saw her. Well, now, if you don't mind, I'll get back to my friend. Ah, uh, but I do mind. Sonny Sullivan, you're going to have supper with me. Oh, am I? Mm-hmm. Didn't start. Now, that's not fair. You know very well an Irish girl wouldn't want to cross even one star. 
Oh, come on, let me show you how to get a 10 course dinner in New Orleans without ever leaving the sidewalk. All right? Oh, not a bit hungry. Here comes the first course. No. Have a taste of the Louisiana shrimp? No. Smell. Honk. Honk. Just a place to get the next course. Automobile magnets, me? I'm just a hard-working engineer. Well, how about Warren Moses? Oh, that's my aunt Barbara. Oh, it's all in the family. Yeah. You know, the Warren family's been in the automobile business for over 35 years. Oh, upstart. What? You know, the Sullivans have been in show business for over 300 years. Oh, hello. My sister could have only heard you say that. <laughs> Evening, children. We got legs, wings, breast, ham, and home. I'll take wings. Same for you, sir? No, Mammy, I'll take a half. I'm up a type for wings. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, hey, Ken. Oh. Oh, hello. Uh, what have you got there? It's Eustace. Eustace? Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, I mean, most girls would be afraid if they saw a mouse. A mouse! <laughs> You're doing well. Aunt Barbara will be delighted. There, Julius. <laughs> you know, Egghead, lots of men have told me that they're in love with me. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> You don't think my money has anything to do with it? No. <laughs> what kind of money have you? Oh, about two million. About two million? Dollars? <laughs> two million dollars and you run around like that with holes in your clothes? And... Where's Sonny? I wouldn't know, my good man. Egghead. Oh, uh, uh, Professor uh, Bunny Billings, Miss Juliet running me. Yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> What could have happened to her? Oh, sick is all right. I wouldn't worry about her. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Apple taffy. A taffy apple. Uh-uh. Apple taffy. Everyone knows that. Look, I come from a long line of taffy apple eaters. The Warrens were noted for it. But don't try to tell me about a taffy apple. You don't even know how to eat one. 
No? Uh -uh. No true apple taffy eater would ever begin by biting into the side of it. Why not? That's the spirit of adventure. Now, an Irishman always starts by biting the top of the apple. All right. Apple taffy, apple apple, you win. But only because I don't want to spend the last hour of my to go arguing about a taffy. Apple taffy. Only one more hour. Hmm? At 12, the bells of St. Louis ring out the Mardi Gras. I'm a Cinderella hated clock. What? Right? Yes. Dreams that live on the rays of the moon and die as soon as they set eyes on the sun. Hey, that's good. <laughs> well, it ought to be. <laughs> A little bit of meddling bluebird. Sonny. Do you remember the first time you were thrown into my arm? Just about... a hundred years ago? Mm -hmm. That couldn't have been just an accident, could it? Well, the side wasn't too comfy. Oh, all right. Where are we going? French market? Come on, you'll see. Farewell performance at your age. I can't believe it. Well, you expected me to get married sometime, didn't you, Morgan? No, I didn't expect you to be picked up and kissed by a strange man and come home engaged all in the same night. Oh, what a night. Huh? Louisiana shrimp, fried chicken, apple taffy, and the Mississippi. I thought love that's indigestion. You're on, Miss Sullivan. Here it is. <laughs> Going to marry. The 
one with the pipe. Two jolly blue boys, two tried and true boys. They call me Sam Garb. I'm Jack Garb. Ha, ha. Talk about women, they fall for a gob. Can fix your job, kneel down and squall. Say, really, go blow me. That's new from a lime. Eh, beat me, say, the race is a bar. We do the on pipe when Neptune gets rough. No boogie woogie. Uh, the on pipe's all stuff. <laughs> I told her to be careful of that one. I'm sorry, madam. I was a little startled. You better get him up right away, Johnson. Uh, yes, madam. Oh. Oh, your lovely perfume. Perfume? That Scottish queen and the blister the bottoms of your feet. Ah, oh, Now, run along, Lizzie, and get me a bottle of beer to take in my bicarbonate. Oh, hello, Henry. What's the matter with you? Rushing me back here just because Larry got himself engaged to Juliet Runnymede. Juliet Runnymede? Can you sit down? No. Uh, may I? Uh... No, those are my dual pistols. Presents from the Maharaja. I taught him to rumba, and he taught me to shoot. Shoot? Shoot. His father, about Runnymede. Well, what about him? Juliet is a debutante who came out a little too late, but she has two million dollars. Cowboy taught me to do that. <laughs> it may be loaded. Yes, of course it's loaded. As a matter of fact, Miss Barber, I'm not going to marry Miss Runningfield. Well, I'm rather pleased he isn't going to marry Juliet. There are just as many girls with just as much money who aren't half witted. Yes, but this girl is no one you know. No? Who is it? Well, she is. She is. If you don't mind, I'll tell you over there. This girl is. What am I aiming at now, Henry? Now? Oh, it's that beautiful inlaid clock. Larry is going to marry. That is... That... You stop that double talk, Henry. It certainly doesn't look like a clock to me. No. Oh, yes, there's a clock. You met this girl in a circus. Well, that's nothing. I met the Maharaja on a Ferris wheel. But this girl is of the circus. She rides in the circus on a white horse. She dives into a tank. How quaint. She what? She is a circus. Horseback actress. My, what a good shot. The Sultan's horse. Henry, I was not aiming at the horse. You 
and say goodbye in show business, or I'm just going to slip out when nobody's looking. A lot easier that way. You'll understand, won't you, Patrick? <laughs> Everybody, be not sure. The governor's got something to say. Joe? Major, it is needless for me to say that your absence will be keenly felt, not only by myself, but by your co worker. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is we'll miss you. And with your leaving, we all feel like folding up. But instead, going right on doing as good a show as we can. Don't ever think that. Any of us here will ever forget you. As a little tribute, we've... Hey, where is it? Hey, hey, hey where's the property man? Where's that box from? Where are those things? She's got to wear them all day. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is from all of us. From the roustabouts on up. It's, uh, well, we thought of uh, getting you a nice box. But we figure the Warrens have plenty of electric ice boxes. <laughs> something for you to wear when you meet your ritzy relative. Uh, don't open it until you get there. I'm going to be. Say, Miss Sullivan. Hello, Johnson. How do you do, Miss? Excuse me, sir. Well, Johnson approves. Yes, that's the first hurdle. This is the second hurdle. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. It's the factory. You mind if we for just one minute, business? Oh, I should say not, darling. This is no time to be losing your job. <laughs> At seven o'clock, there will be a light meal served in your room. At eight o'clock, Miss Barbara Warren will receive you down here in the hall. And if I may say so, Miss, that means eight o'clock precisely. What a funny way to receive people, sitting way out there in the middle of nowhere. 
She's been receiving like that ever since she saw Queen Victoria do it in Buckingham Palace. Hello, baby. Oh, there you are. Yes, here I am. Well, what the... How are you? Oh, all right. Now, where is she? She has two minutes yet. She won't be late. She'll probably make up for lost time by riding down the stairs on a white horse. Good heavens, she looks as though she just won the Kentucky Derby. making a grand entrance. In other words, darling, in behalf of the Warrens, welcome to Waverly Hall. I haven't seen that many orchids since those gangster funerals in Chicago. Yes, they're lovely, aren't they? Everybody in the show chipped in. They were a farewell gift. Sentimental for being aren't you? Well, it does kind of bring them along with me, you know. Huggins and Bunny and Egghead. And I suppose that is the tattooed lady. <laughs> <laughs> Let us go into the drawing room. Oh, now I know why you call her the old dragon. Don't worry, darling. Aunt Barbara's bar is worse than her bite. Oh, well, that's some consolation. Johnson, get me a drink. Yes. An old-fashioned with a dash of absinthe. Yes. Muggins. Egghead. Running. Oh. First time? You remember Riverbird? Look at that lock, we're getting close to you, isn't it? Oh, all right. Don't you dare tell Muggins. I promise. Oh, Fred. This is up in Miss Sullivan's room. Take great care of him. Watch out for distress signals. Lord, no, never take my eyes off you. Poor little Muggins and the tattooed lady had a short life. Sit down. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to be her sister-in-law? Thank goodness that'll never happen to you, Miss Judy. Sullivan, Sullivan, what branch of the Sullivan? Oh, my grandfather came from Inniskillen. Oh, the hunting Sullivan. No, the flying Sullivan. Flying Sullivan? Yes, darling, the Flying Sullivan. My grandmother was the greatest in Europe. It isn't everyone who can boast of a family tree in which her own grandmother actually was. Well, what are we going to do now? Are you going to stay here all night listening to that chamber music? I didn't think we'd need any other entertainment with so much home talent. You'll sing for it, of course, son. I will. Don't tell me you sing, too. Oh, I've really not got very much of it. Oh, go ahead. I hate people who have to be told. Come on, sing. Larry, will you play for me? You bet I will. You can sit down now and sing. You know what I'd like to do? Get right in the middle of that floor and shout. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes. yes. Oh, Henry, don't you just love music? Especially the three Bs. Three Bs? Oh, oh yes, of course. Bar, Beethoven. And Boogie Woogie. What's she going to sing? Nothing you're apt to know, darling. She's going to sing. Yes. Here comes your boogie woogie now. Henry, 
Rent, why did you tell her that was my favorite song? I, Miss Barbara, I never said a word. I thought not. And I keep some profaned by a tear. My grandmother learned that song from Tom Moore himself. She's a calculating little wench. Which time will but name or deal? Oh, a heart that has truly loved never forget. Fire off, Henry. Fire off. Fire off. We can sing a little song, too. Orchestrated with a checkbook. And I know just the tune to sing. When it is same what she gave. you take good care of her. She's very valuable. Well, possibly Miss Sullivan would be interested in Larry's collection of birds. His stuffed variety. He's been collecting them ever since he was a very small boy. They're in our library. Uh, well, darling, what is it? What is it? Take me away from this bleak party. I'm going to bed. Sit down, please. Sit down right there. Miss Sullivan, as you know, I am the Warren family lawyer. And more or less Larry's guardian. Uh, more or less. Yes, you've made that quite clear. Thank you. Has it ever occurred to you how nice it would be to have means of your own? That is to say, to be absolutely independent. Well, no, I've never really thought about it. That's hilarious. That's good. After all, when two people are very much in love, you know, they just don't discuss those things. Come, come, come. You don't mean to tell me you're really in love with Larry. Strange, isn't it? <clears throat> it's different. I'll have to appeal to you. Hey. You see, you're not the only one who loves him. His family loves him. They want him to be happy. They're, uh, they're jealous. Jealous of those who can contribute to his happiness more than they. Very nicely put. Exactly what I was going to say myself. As you know. Camille, third act. Bless my soul, so it is. Yeah. Tell me, how is it possible that you, who've been bobbing around on horses and diving into tanks and a circus girl all your life, would know anything of Camille? My aunt, Kate Sullivan, rocked me to sleep rehearsing. Kate Sullivan? Oh, not the Kate Sullivan. Mm. No, no, not the great Kate Sullivan. The great Kate Sullivan. Your aunt? Was my aunt. Not really. Not really. Why, Miss Sullivan, she was a great actress. She was one of the greatest actresses that ever lived. Would you believe it that I saw her in Camille in the old Lyceum Theater in London 21 nights in a row, and the last night of all, I sent her a bunch of great big viol... Uh, uh, what are they? Uh, peonies. I'm sure Aunt Katie was very touching. I never forget her in the last scene where she said, I'm not going to live very long, Alma. I shall not live till spring, Alma. Yes, that was it. That was, that was it, yes. Yeah. And then he said so tenderly, don't be afraid, Camille. Courage, Camille, courage. Oh, of course, that was the famous line, wasn't it, Jess? I was needing some of it myself. You remember the final scene? She's tiny, and she handed him the little mirror. Silver mirror? Picture. Picture. Picture? Yes, yes, it was. It was a picture. And she said, if anyone asks you, say, uh, someone who loved you well. Kate Sullivan herself. Oh, you're marvelous. So are you. Aunt Barbara will be delighted when she hears you meet the factory, Miss. Very uh, Henry. She's... Poor Henry. I'm beginning to realize why Larry fell in love with you. May I give you a little advice? <laughs> I just got away from Aunt Barbara. Good night, Eric. Well, what's the matter? Oh, you promised not to let Elizabeth get you down. Larry, please, in the morning.
just middling about. Well, I'm familiar with that. Sit down. I frightened you, didn't I, Tara? I frighten everybody. You know, Sonny, you're the first real human being that's been in this family since Jean, the pirate. He was on my side of the family, of course. Want me to roll you up? Oh, no, thank you. Call me Aunt Baba. Go ahead. Try it. Baba? That's right. From the moment you told me why you wanted to wear those orchids, I knew you had stuff. Why did you send Mr. Faith, Henry? I sent Henry so you could make a fool of him. What I hear you did better than I expect. Oh, I only hope Larry is good enough for you. That isn't what I was thinking a few minutes ago. I know. Planning the courageous exit. I mean, rotten. Why exit courageously? Why exit at all? Might this help? Now, I want you to promise me that you won't do anything noble and ridiculous before you see Larry. Go on. Promise. And now, you just stamp it out. Or let it blaze. Bye-bye. I'm a fine one to be kidding you, buddy. Blind leading the blind. That's what they call I'm the black sheep of the family. Well, I better get in now. Hi, dear. Giving me the sniffles. Good night, Aunt Baba. But if you ever tell anybody about me being an old softie, you ought to see me with the Maharaja's dueling pistols. <laughs> Same old stuff. Hey. 
it is. Amid the baronial splendor of Waverly Hall, Miss Sonny Sullivan. At bareback, rather. The charming bride-to-be, the niece of Kate Sullivan. Kate Sullivan, as you know, the late, great Kate Sullivan. And fancy spangled swimmer. She numbered among her repertoire such marvelous plays as Camille, Ibsen's Wild Duck, Shaw's Pygmalion. Yeah, today became the bride of Lawrence Warren, millionaire auto manufacturer. After the brilliant ceremony, the young couple left for a honeymoon in Hawaii. <laughs> Of course, you can't really say that. They're not even married yet. You'll find a list of the bridesmaids and all the other junk on my desk. Something old. That's me. Something new. That's you. Something borrowed. Here. That was once a brand new penny that I was to wear in my shoe on my wedding day. Oh, Aunt Barbara, you never know. Nothing told. to tell. He was a lieutenant. Handsomest boy you ever saw. I wasn't so bad myself then. Slim little thing like you. He heard somewhere that my family didn't think he was good enough for me. So he broke it off. Then you never saw him again? He died last year, a general. Confounded fool. If he hadn't been so stubborn and married me, he'd been commander-in-chief. Papa, they don't know you very well, do they? No. I don't talk my fool head off to everyone. You punch that out for me, Russ. I can get to the track this afternoon. Yeah, I'll be here for a couple more highballs. Young man, if you were sent to cover a murder, you'd at least have the decency to remain until the crime was committed. My apologies. All right. Well, I must go and get the rest of my war paint on. I don't suppose there'll be many more weddings for me in Waverly Hall. Oh, something blue. Park in the rear courtyard, your number's 91. Yes, sir. See who that was? Yeah, they're all here today, the whole blue book. Drop your passengers, park in the rear courtyard. I wonder what her people are like. My dear, people like that haven't got any people. <laughs> Can you imagine Sonny's surprise when she sees us? Ah, uh, Governor, that's what I call a bow gesture. If I'd had to close the show for three weeks, I wouldn't have missed the wedding. Boy, don't forget the timing. As soon as the I do's are over, I make the announcement. Then Hector comes in with a big horseshoe. <laughs> no. That's what I said, Hector doesn't. We don't in. want Hector till the finale. Well, that will make him awfully angry, boss. We better leave him outside. Muggins, darling. Oh, Muggins, I'm so glad you made it. Wild elephants couldn't keep me away. Oh, how's everyone? Oh, where are they? What's the new girl like? Fair. Penny doesn't like us. You never could pull off. Oh, <laughs> my dear. <laughs> Let's have a look at you. Oh, you look like a million. How do you feel? Terrible. Only three lines to the top, but I couldn't be more nervous if I had to go on and play Ophelia. That's fine. Now I know you'll give a great performance. I've tied lots of these aspects, Larry, but never on such a memorable occasion. Imagine the niece of the great Kate Sullivan. I'd like to punch this guy. Now, careful. Don't you lose that temper of yours. I had those reporters absolutely eating out of my hand when I told them about Kate. Yes, I know, but some of this stuff's not funny. Why don't you leave us alone? Have you an invitation, sir? Uh, no, but I'd like to see Miss Elizabeth Warren for a moment. Would you step? Good morning, Johnson. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, as you do, sir. I'm sorry, but as you see, there's a wedding day. Oh, I know. That's rather important. My name is Billing. A funny Billing. We uh, You'll see that she's ready to leave her room by 11, won't you? Yes. There's a Mr. Billings to see you, miss. He appears to be an itinerant trace. Johnson, you know I can't see anyone now. Uh, quite so. Oh, Johnson, did he say his name was Bonnie Billings? I believe he did mention it, Bonnie. I'll see him. Yes. I think Elizabeth is bearing up magnificently. Well, she realizes nothing can stop it now. Haven't you finished this thing yet? Calm down. Now, calm down. That's all you have to do. Just take your cue from me. 
there. Now, Larry, when I pull out the ring, why, you were the ring. The ring? I had it. I had it right there in this pocket. I had it. Well, who's, who's, whose wedding is this? What are you getting nervous about? Just get your veil on, dear. They want you downstairs in just ten minutes. Oh, if you please. No, no. Fefe showed me exactly how you want it put on. Will you give that to me? What would Fefe know about dressing Sonny Sullivan? That's been my job ever since I made her first little ballet skirt. Oh, listen to Pipster. This is Mrs. Muggins. She used to help me in the show. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, would you mind? Certainly not, if you wish it. She wishes it. Just ten minutes. All right. Well, she won't miss her cue. Do you know, Egghead, all my life I've wanted to be in the circus. Not really. You know, Winnie always wanted to be out of one. Oh, how quaint. <laughs> You. <laughs> Listen, fellas, you're all in here on passes. No tricks. Don't worry, Governor. The monkeys and the elephants will be performing for us today. Major, I said no tricks. Johnson. Be nonchalant, boys. That means in French, why? I'm happy, too. Oh, darling. Not like you to cry. Cry? <laughs> well, that crying way you get a load of me at the wedding. Oh, Oh, Run down, darling. I want to know how I look when I come down.
you do something. Well, what can I do? Nobody listens to me now, it is. Oh, that's... <laughs> what a Mahasha. Oh. oh, we don't have to wait for this wedding. Why don't we go and have one of our own? Sweetie! Are we going to take sick and good into a couple of hoofings? I should say not. Play gypsies, jerk. Exactly. Seals. Acrobats. It's a lie. trying to find out. Well, will you stop it? Never did I think I'd see the day when a seal would be waltzing around in Waverly Hall. Yes, now I know you're drunk. Oh, I wish I were. I tell you, you've got to do something. About what? About the seal, about the acrobats, about Juliet running me, doing the Mahuchka with Friday Groustabout. What are you talking about? Down seal upstairs in your drawing room. Can you come downstairs right away, dear? The bunch, they're ad-libbing all over the parlor. The bunch? It was supposed to have been a surprise for you, but it's gone all fluey. Oh, Muggins, but I can't. It's Larry's season before the wedding. It's bad luck. It'll be worse luck if you don't come down, darling. All right. Mr. Warren, how about one of you and the seal? I'm sorry, Mr. Warren. I, I guess we kind of broke things up. Get out. All right, where's Shut up. Get out or I'll throw you out. Hey, Rube. Lay off. Mr. Warren, do you know what hey, Rube means? In exactly two minutes, where well, Waverly Hall once stood. But don't worry. We're going, quietly. But only on account of Sonny. Look, mister, take your train sealing your monkeys and get going. Larry. Don't interrupt me. But Larry, these are my... Get you out of this sort of thing. You don't have to marry me to get me out of anything. Now, Sonny, keep out of this. It's bad enough without you making a scene. Me making a scene? Isn't that what's been expected of me ever since I came here? Wasn't well, I supposed to come riding in on a white horse or sliding down a tightrope? Take it easy, Sonny. It'll be all right as soon as I get the gang out. Oh, wait a minute, honey. My friends are staying. Your friends are going. All right. I'm going, too. <laughs> We wouldn't treat one of the whole bunch of snobs you call your friends. We've been thrown out before, run out of tank towns and two St. Carnivals. But we always stuck together, and that's the way it is now. Well, I'm going better call it off until you come to your senses. Don't worry. I've come to my senses just in time. I'm glad this happened when it did. If that's the way you feel. Honey. Hold your horses, honey. We've got to straighten this out. <laughs> Oh, come on, let's leave him on a laugh. Get some water, Muggins. Oh, no, I don't want the water. Russ, kill that wedding copy I gave you. Now, the impressive ceremony just turned into a brawl with seals, acrobats, elephants. No, I haven't been drinking, and the bride and groom are having a knockdown drag out in the middle of it. Honey, why did you bring them in before the wedding? Oh, that Warren dame, uh, Lizzie, insisted. Come on, I'm all right. Sonny! You may need this. Thank you. I'm quite sure you need this. <laughs> wow! The charming bride just kicked her sister-in-law right in the middle of the lobby. Oh, Father! She kicked me. Who did? Sonny. Sonny? Oh, well, that's what I always wanted to do myself. What's going on here? It's all off, Aunt Barbara. What is? Oh, everything. Operator. Operator. Too late. But you gotta kill it. Hang up down there. I want the police. This is important. Hang up yourself. Listen, Russ, I'm not kidding. She kicked your sister in the lobby and the wedding's all off. The wedding is off. Oh, get me the police. Get me the fire department. Get me an aspirin. Make a statement for the press, Miss Warren. Young man, for once in my life, I have nothing to say. Don't, Muggins, it's all right. Oh, but it does 
We broke it up, and I can't bear it. It doesn't matter, Muggins. I guess I'm not much good at drawing room stuff. This is where I belong. You'd belong anywhere, Sonny. <laughs> I've never been away. How's the house? It's breaking my heart, turning them away by the hundreds. No. Every seat gone, could have sold out three times over. Daddy, that's wonderful. Hello, Mr. Hey, there she goes. I'll be waiting for you. Right. Come on, Morgan. I hear they couldn't even give the mayor any seats. Well, it's a good thing somebody's still interested. Sonny Sullivan, if you're still thinking about this. I'm not. Say you're not. How oh, you could think you could get along without all this. I must have been crazy. I'll say you were. Doors open. Once more, then we'll break it up. As it say so, rehearsing for three weeks and every day it gets worse. Two little bluebirds love two other bluebirds, but those two are true birds at four. Five minutes, Sonny. I'm ready. There's a riot at the box office. They want tickets I haven't got. Got to call out the police. Oh, that's swell. Muggins, if I can draw a crowd like this by doing a few stunts, I might get them to come and see me in a legitimate show. Of course you could. It means a lot of hard work, though. Well, that's the idea. Well, you know, Aunt Kate always used to say every actress needed a kick in the pants before she amount to anything. You gave Lizzie enough of a jolt to make her a Sarah Bernhardt. change to your sunshine costume? Oh, sure. Why? What's the idea? I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to hold a parade for the finale. Start with my new number, then sunshine. I don't want them to see you until then. It'll be a sock opening for you. Oh, buddy, you're a darling. Thanks. Come on, Patty, you can relax. we got to step in it. You've got to hurry, honey. We've only got about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like Buddy giving me to a break on a night like this?
standing them up yet out there? I can't see a thing with all those spotlights on Bunny. They're so quiet. You've never had a better audience in your life. Good luck, Sonny. Oh, thanks.
like to join my show, offering half interest in water streamlined showboat. Huh? Right going up, Miss Sullivan. Hey, Charlie, take a look at the shore. I've got them lined up and hit a natchez. Honey girl, you're my honey girl. 